Garrett shows us why he has the reputation he does, Amon gets a reminder of his place in Hayek's empire. To begin, we have to go into this whole situation with Hayek, Nadia, Isabel, and also Amon. From what we've seen thus far, it seemed that Amon was building up to becoming Hayek's partner in this whole casino and hotel deal, but we learned this episode that that's not the case. What ends up happening is that Hayek decides to give Isabel and her husband the hotel casino business, or at least partner with them on that, while Amon is going to maintain being regulated to the casino, not to the casino, to the club. With that, Nadia is quite upset, especially because Armand doesn't push the conversation further with Hayek, who pretty much shuts it down and makes it seem, despite all the work we've seen Armand do for Hayek, he makes it seem like he gave stuff to Armand. And with that in mind, Nadia is just increasingly getting frustrated with being in this business partnership slash marriage with Armand, but not necessarily seeing it as fruitful. And then when you add in Isabel, since she's taken over the hotel and casino bit, which apparently includes the club, her checking the books and noticing that Nadia's cooking the books, it leads to Nadia more and more realizing that this situation's not going to get better for her. It's only going to get more and more frustrating, especially since now she has to really be on her cue. She really has to cross her T's and dot her I's since Isabel doesn't know that her father has this whole organization that is getting this money launched for the club. In the next topic, we're going to go into what's happening with Tony. And that's pretty much Garrett just showing us that he, because of what Tony did, has to show her that he has the full power of the United States government behind him, which is how he ends up having Tony, Fiona, and a whole bunch of other people Arrested is not the proper term, but they're both, they're all taken in into a ICE detention center. Now, as you can imagine, this is definitely very scary for both Fiona and Tony because Luca does not know anybody besides his family. And while Jazz is a United States citizen and we're told by Fiona that maybe her dad can take her, Chris is not. And he, from what we know, has had no experience over in the Philippines and it's hard to even say if he got picked up would he even know where to take Luca in order to get to his uncle because from what we see despite Fiona being a TNT all these years she never set up a contingency plan so her kids know what to do in case something happened now granted with getting caught she does thankfully get a phone call in order to do all that but a lot of that comes out of sacrifice and of course that sacrifice is Tony being forced into trying to find more information on Amon and the problem with that is out of all the people in T Tony's life Amon is the only one who's really helped with Luca in terms of the bone marrow seeing that doctor so Garrett trying to do this whole oh I'm trying to take the bad guys off the street thing is like for Tony's like do you not see that you're the bad guy here in order to take down one person who yes is selling armed weapons and all that to uh, armed conflict in a different country you just ruined the lives of so many people and their children in the process so who's really the villain here or do you really think that these ends justify the means so with that in mind, rather than simply be the snitch that Garrett wants, Tony takes the risk and tells Amon, hey, this is what's happening. The FBI is on to you. They're trying to use me. And this makes him a bit upset. But while it does make him upset, he also sees this as an opportunity for with the way that Hayek's treating him, it's not clear if Amon realizes that he's going to be stuck in this position and he's better off just screwing over Hayek. But it does seem that he at least wants to control the situation the best he can by giving Tony little bits of stuff to give over to Garrett, whether it's Eric's laptop, but it mostly cleaned out of stuff that can implicate Amon, and who knows what else in the future. 
because one of the things that's not really clear right now is what's Armand's long game, whether he's going to try to take down Hayek and then, you know, try to take over everything. If he's going to try to take down Hayek and maybe try to salvage the club and maybe, as Isabel's trying to do, do things cleanly, it's not clear what's going on. But what we do know is with Garrick being able to clear that laptop that he's given by Tony, he is able to at least save Fiona, who, with her on her way to being deported and now seeing Tony with Garrett, she may finally start asking questions about what's going on instead of kind of just thinking that whatever Tony's doing, she has it handled. The best highlight for us is just depicting the deportation experience. For a while, we've seen bits and pieces of it in the past. We've seen it in news reports that Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez was doing. We also saw it on a recent episode of The Equalizer in terms of separating a child from their parent. I think when it comes to The Cleaning Lady, since it's a show about immigrants, but specifically undocumented, ing undocumented immigrants, it kind of gives it a whole new level. For The Equalizer, that was just one episode. And while what we saw through AOC was a definite real thing, you don't get to see behind the behind the gates too much. And even then, it kind of was a blip on a radar that because of the former president was a big thing. But now with having Biden, even though things may not have changed, it's less of an issue. But I feel that the cleaning lady kind of brought it back to the forefront and made it so that you're reminded that treatment at these centers have probably not changed. There's still probably real ice boxes where aluminum foil looking blankets are used in order to keep people some type of warm. There's probably still not enough medical attention for those who are either pregnant, injured, and when it comes to ice agents, who knows if they treat these people like human beings and not just a number who sort of like money in a bank just get moved around to where they need to before they get shipped out into an ATM or in this case shipped out to whatever country they might have come from. If not, depending on how you look at it, the country where they assume they come from since who knows how their records are. Never mind if they're probably shipping people off to different places based off of whatever deals the government has. But I don't know what happens with ICE. It's something that's a bit of a mystery to me, but getting to the point, showing how heartless that process is and also just really going into the fear that can come over somebody and also the fear that when it comes to a person's kids they go through, it definitely made you realize that as much as you may not have thought about the threat of Tony or even Fiona getting deported, and honestly, I still don't think it's going to like really happen. There is a need to remind yourself that these two are in a very vulnerable population. And when it comes to people like Garrett, they'll take advantage of that if they need to. The second highlight is just seeing how far Garrett was willing to go. He got a whole different federal agency involved in order to take down Armand and Hayek. And he clearly didn't care about the collateral damage. He didn't care about Fiona's kids. He clearly did not care about Luca and what would happen if Tony got deported and he wasn't able to stop that happening. Never mind all those other people that Tony and Fiona work with, including one woman who got deported and now her kids. Well, we gotta hope that Fiona's able to get to them and help them get to her family in, I believe, Texas. And depending where in Texas, that's a bit of a drive since Texas is a very huge state to the point where driving from Vegas to if it's like Eastern Texas is going to take more than a day for Fiona. And that means a day where she's not going to be able to make money for her family. And I just think that Garrett did not think of the domino effect for his actions. And it really does show you when it comes to how the United States government operates, it doesn't really think long term. It thinks short term in terms of, hey, we're going to get this bad guy. But it doesn't think of all the people we traumatize, kill, or injure on the way that end up usually becoming the next line of bad guys in order to get revenge or 
try to empower themselves so that this situation doesn't repeat itself. The third highlight is Amon potentially turning his back on Hayek, and that's mostly because it can lead to different things. It could lead to our mom becoming an informant and us seeing someone who's high level get into that type of position and even explore Hayek's business dealing more. But you also have to factor in when it comes to Isabel, since she's starting to take over, what will this mean between Amon and Isabel, especially if Amon goes after Hayek? Because lest we forget, Isabel doesn't know what her father's into. So when you think about that and the fact that Aman may be feeding information to Tony to get to Garrett that takes down Hayek, what is that going to do to her? If they start seizing all of Hayek's assets, there's a good potential that Isabel's going to end up broke. And yes, Ben may have money, but at the same time, it could be that the only reason that Hayek chose him is strictly because he was Armenian and that he could lead to attractive grandbabies. It may not be that Ben has a type of education, type of family structure and money where he can possibly get Isabel into something legitimate and continue the family line. If not, at the very least, keep Isabel from being implicated and put in jail as well. So, as you can see, a lot of stuff short term in terms of Armand participating when it comes to the investigation and either through Tony or directly to Garrett, that's one thing. But the long-term issues and the long-term ramifications of that, it's not clear where that can go, but it's definitely going to cause a lot of issues that may make this far more complicated than it is right now. And for our last highlight, it's going to be just the show, or specifically this episode, bringing a bit more interest towards Nadia. Thus far, Nadia's main kind of claim to fame is being Armand's wife for reasons that you don't really understand. Was she just chosen because Isabel wasn't available and this was a good way to cover up that he still had feelings for Hayek's daughter? Could it be that she was the daughter of one of the help and they got together once Isabel was no longer in the picture and he tried to love her but something happened? It Could it be also that maybe he was trying to help her get a green card or there's, there's so much that could be when it comes to Nadia. But I have to admit, her past is not as interesting as her future. With her seemingly being done with Amon, yet knowing all that goes on when it comes to Hayek and Amon, there's the question of what will she do next? Will she try to assert Amon and just take the whole pie so that she can show that she can do it on her own and then, because she's a bit more aggressive and will take initiative than Amon, try to move up through Hayek's empire that way? Will she try to potentially who knows, betray Amon and Hayek to try to get what she can and then run off. There's a lot of questions when it comes to this episode about will someone betray another person or to move up or else get out. And when it comes to Nadia, it's definitely one of those situations where you're very much interested in figuring out she doesn't have much to lose. And what she does have to potentially lose is not hers anyway, so... She's definitely a wild card and has the potential to be someone we're going to have more and more interest when it comes to coming episodes. Overall, with this episode, the cleaning lady has upped the stakes, has shown that alliances are slowly starting to shift, and it really pushes you to wonder, with most, if not all, of Tony's secrets out in the open, how will she handle things going forward between Armand, Fiona, Garrett, as he learns about her little arrangement with Armand, and even when it comes to Nadia, how is she playing to things? And it's just so much that is being planned for the potential long term that it makes it so it's hard to not want to theorize and guess what's going to happen in the short term as we continue to see the domino effect triple over.